How old would you say you are again? So one time works very differently in hell, so... He's just sensitive about his age. I mean, even I don't know the real number. So I figured it's like six and a half years ago that you all were filming the pilot for Lucifer. Talk about what your first impression of the show was back then and what sort of unique storytelling you thought it could bring. Gosh, well, if I think back to the pilot, I think back to one being very excited about doing it in the first place because I love the script. I fell in love with the character of Lucifer like by about the third page of my first read of the script. Then I think about um, Hollywood Boulevard being closed down for five nights. <laughs> like Highland, where, where the Oscars is, basically. We had Hollywood that. Hollywood and Highland. For five nights. Hollywood and Highland, yeah. Closed down for five nights in a row with, like, a massive crew and all this. And I was just thinking, wow, this show's, like, big. This is, like, a big thing. It was the movie. I was really excited about how it was going to turn out. Are you trying to bribe me, sir? Yes, of course. But did I think I'd be here talking to you in the realms that we're talking these days? Absolutely no way. It was coming off of uh, Chicago Fire. Tom and I share a very good friend, Jess Spencer from that show. Yeah, I didn't really know what to expect. I loved the script. And then, right, like Tom said, when we started shooting the pilot, I went, oh, wow, this is bigger scale than really anything I've done. And I just fell in love with the pilot. So that, you know, at first, you, as you get going, you learn your character so well, you get, you know, you learn the other characters. But at first, it was just, I loved the script. Lucifer Morningstar. Is that uh, a stage name or something? <laughs> God-given, I'm afraid. I love the idea of Lucifer, Satan, coming up and, like, living life almost with duality and recognizing humanity. I loved it. But, yeah, I would never have imagined it would have come this, you know, us getting canceled on Fox and then the amazing fans who we adore and love saving us. And, and here we are speaking with you. I mean, I don't think Tom or I or really anyone expected that. Well, let's talk about those fans. When did you first get an inkling that you had this fan base that would be so passionate that when the day came to hashtag save Lucifer, they would help get the job done. Before we got saved, in that year leading up to it, so when season three was sort of on and airing and we were doing that, I've been to a couple of conventions that year. We played a bit with the structure of the show. And so some of the things that you might have seen on the trailer might not be happening in the present day. No one knew who I was the year before. And then by the time I come out the second year, everyone was like, oh, we love Lucifer, we love Lucifer. And then I realized that it wasn't just there, it was out in the streets and not in the States and not in the UK, but like in Europe and different places was going around the world. I was thinking, gosh, this seems a hell of a lot more popular than Fox seems to think it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember having that inkling. I remember thinking when we got cancelled, because I knew about 24 hours before we got cancelled, before it was announced we got cancelled, I found out. No one was allowed to say anything in those moments. And I just thought, I think people are going to be upset. I just didn't count how many. And just how know upset. How upset, yeah. <laughs> they got really upset. <laughs> yeah. And then they saved us. So now here we are with your extra final season. What can the fans expect? from these last 10 episodes. Becoming God is a big job. Maybe he doesn't want to go in half cocked. I should definitely be full cocked. I think a fitting goodbye to our characters. It's a luxury to be able to know that you're finishing your story. So we really thought long and hard about how we wanted to end it. And the journey that Chloe and Lucifer have been on up to this point has been great. But this season's kind of new territory for them where they're working together as a partnership about something that they've never experienced before together. You know, it leans into all, all, everything that we've kind of earned up to this moment. Lauren, did anything surprise you about the final season without spoiling anything? There were some surprises in there, but what I really liked was the idea of Chloe and Lucifer really being a team, being together for each other as a couple and helping each other out. That's just sort of a different dynamic than we've seen with Chloe and Lucifer. Usually it's kind of this push and pull, push and pull. But now this last season, we really are on the same team. And we're fighting the same battle and we're there for each other. There's good times and bad times like any other couple, right? But we're finally together and that, you know, without spoiling anything, there's a lot for us to work on together as a team and to, to fight for and strive for. And in the final season's final moments, what are fans going to be feeling? I hope they'll be crying. <laughs> I really hope they'll be sobbing. And then I hope that their, their hearts will be filled with joy at the same time. Yeah, I agree. I think it's, you know, hopefully it's a, a gratifying kind of bittersweet, as Tom was saying earlier, bittersweet, I think is a great encapsulating term for, for the ending. I think fans will get what they want. And I also think it doesn't cheat. It doesn't gloss anything over or make anything too easy. But I think ultimately they'll get what they want to see.